dogs love being with us. We're precious to dogs as much as dogs are precious to us. Dogs play such a huge value of being with us that unfortunately, when we're absent, some dogs can really, really suffer with separation anxiety. Signs of separation anxiety may be pacing before you've even left the house. When the dog starts to see the cues, the signs that you're about to leave, maybe putting on your coat, picking up your car keys, putting on your boots, you can see the dog's body language ramping through as they get more and more anxious and stressed that you're gonna leave. Maybe you're gonna see signs of destructive chewing, particularly around exit points when you're not there. Vocalization. When you're not there, maybe the dog's gonna be howling, whining, barking. Perhaps your dog can't eat when you're not there. Perhaps your dog's gonna be incontinent through stress when you're not with them. First up, whenever you see any signs like this, don't punish your dog. That's only gonna increase anxiety. That's only gonna add more fuel to the fire rather than diffuse the situation. What we need to be doing to help dogs that suffer with separation anxiety is to build up tiny little slithers of independence and always giving it a positive association. So for starters, we can start offering opportunities for voluntary isolation. So that may mean that the best bed in the house, the best shoes, the best toys are in the dog's den area with the door open. If the dog chooses to go into that den area and have a great time without you, fantastic. Choice is amazing, it's very, very empowering. So we wanna be offering that choice all the time. It's really important that if the dog feels, if it all gets on top, if they panic, that they can leave and find you, that's gonna relieve a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety in the first place. We can also build up periods of semi-isolation. Semi-isolation may mean that you throw out your dog's treats into the back garden. Your dog can go out and choose to be in the garden and find the food. And you can just stay in the kitchen with the door open. So if your dog does want to join you, they can come on in, but safe in the knowledge that they can have a good time by being away from you. Maybe a stuffed Kong or a stuffed activity toy, again, in the dog's den with the door open. And you can just flit in and out of the room move around the house so the dog has constant reminders that you're there, but periods of you not being there, but still in the house. We can start building a bit of semi-isolation by the use of child gates across doors or closing the den door every now and then for short periods of time and building up the duration as long as we can see that the dog's body language is happy and secure. Once that's established, then we can start building up periods of proper isolation maybe having a dog in the kitchen behind a child gate or in a den, you leaving the room, building up to leaving the house for 30 seconds, five minutes, half an hour. A little tip is you can leave a camera, your phone facing the dog, so you can rest assured that your dog is safe and happy and secure, even in your absence. Sometimes separation anxiety works both ways. You can worry about your dog just as much as a dog worrying about you. It's a long process, but it's really worth putting in the effort. So build it up in tiny little increments. Because it's a long process, it can be really, really valuable to recruit the services of your friendly neighbor, friends, family, maybe a dog walker. If you know you're gonna to have to leave the house for any duration of time, longer than your dog's prepared and yet trained to cope with. The owners that have had the greatest success of helping their dogs overcome separation anxiety are the owners that have done the most amount of repetitions and have raised the criteria in tiny little slivers. So they're going from 30 seconds to 60 seconds to two minutes, rather than going from one minute, taking giant steps, fingers crossed, and going to two hours. That's never gonna be achievable. Tiny little slivers, tiny little raises of criteria, and many, 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 many repetitions. The fastest way to get to success is gonna be slowly. Of course, prevention is gonna be so much easier than cure. So no matter what age your dog is, now start building up those periods of isolation in the den with the best chew toys in the world, build a nice positive association to being home alone and keep raising the criteria a tiny little step at a time. We've selectively bred dogs over hundreds of years for many, many reasons. For aesthetics, for working ability, 
but by far the most common characteristic that's bred for nowadays is a dog's amazing ability to bond and build relationships with us humans. I'm not gonna lie to you, separation anxiety is a really tricky one to overcome. But if you keep the faith, if you trust the process, and you go slowly, I promise you, you'll get there. Best of luck.